Hello again, everybody. Kai Waza with you. Welcome to another edition of the Cheap Lounge. This is where uh, I play samples from and discuss easy listening uh, vinyl and CDs, all cheap stuff like from the dollar record bins to salvage from wherever. Uh, intercepted on their way to the trash basically <laughs> where uh, I discuss the records that I have uploaded over the past week to my online easy listening radio station Moody Mood Music that's going to be linked below so you can check that out if you so desire uh, and welcome to another edition I'm just having some additional coffee I've had some now I need some more with some lovely um, maple donut sugar-free syrup in it. Quite tasty. Let's get started, shall we? Okay, here's a record from the uh, much sought after and appreciated <clears throat> in the easy listening world, Command Records, Command ABC Records, uh, both kind of uh, appreciated for the design of the records, which are usually gatefolds, quite elaborate productions with a lot of information about the music and the artists, and also uh, appreciated for the music itself because they featured um, kind of contemporary, you know, at the time arrangements and innovative uh, sounds within the easy listening realm or space age bachelor pad really kind of this most of the command music a little more up tempo you know this one brass impact going someplace it was going to the trash heap but it was procured from a dollar record bin um, this is by warren kine and his brass impact now this is not the first one of these, 1968, I think is the date on this record. Um, actually, they did a couple of this uh, Brass Impact before. Here we see the earlier ones and it, they created such a sensation that they did more. And it really is kind of an intense, <laughs> an intense sound on this record. So it involves you know, an orchestra, look at the copious liner notes here, information about the songs and the, the uh, music. More than you ever wanted to know about Brass Impact, but I like it. Um, yeah, it's, it's a reliant on very concise performance, very concise arrangement, because this is a brass uh, orchestra, the, the big brass section with voices uh, of three female voices singing together, uh, wordlessly most of the time, mostly like your ta-da, ta-da, do-wa, do-wa, do-wa kind of stuff. But it's very concise, like the brass and the voices are going at this, the same time, at the exactly same speed and same moment. So like a Ray Conniff album was, which is deceptively simple when you listen to it, but actually very difficult to perform. And they had to do numerous takes on those songs to get everybody just at the right timing. Same thing with this. Um, and I think you can appreciate when you hear it that, yeah, this would be sort of intense to really record and get right. Uh, and they did quite a wonderful job. I, I hope I'll run across the other two Brass Impact albums. Or I don't know, maybe there are even more than these three. Maybe they were more done later. They are pretty cool. Complete shift here to uh, a group from South America. These two gentlemen. This album is called The Mellow Guitar Moods of Los Indios Tabajaras. <laughs> You 
you know, I, I know there's truth in this story around these guys, but um, I can't help but feel there's a bit of an Ema Sumac thing going on here where they're making something a little more than what it really was. Um, anything you would pick up by Los Indios Tabajadas, beautiful Spanish guitars, beautiful, uh, simple, clear arrangements. They did many albums. They were quite popular, um, a lot of material from them. This one is from 1964. And the story is they are uh, these two Indians, you know, discovered uh, in Brazil. Now, they're, Tapajadas is the uh, area that they're from, which uh, is not, you know, technically in the Amazon. And I think that's kind of the, what you're led to believe through their imagery. Most throughout their entire career, you always see them in Indian outfits, South American Indian outfits. And they sort of give this idea that they're like Amazonian. But they're from the Tabajaras area of Brazil, which is on the coast, the Atlantic, Northern Atlantic coast of Brazil. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, they were probably, in reality, they were probably like poor people performing on the street or something in Tabaharis when they were discovered. But I, I really kind of doubt they were like, you know, headhunters lurking in the Amazon jungles. <laughs> Nonetheless, very beautiful music from them. Hello, everybody. My name is Danny Davis from the Nashville Brass, and I'm here today to give thanks to Moody Mood Music. As you can see, I was already marked down to 297 in 1975. Very humiliating. And here in 2021, I was on my very last leg in a dollar record bin. The only thing between me and the trash was moody mood music. Just like many hundreds of other record albums, moody mood music gave me another chance to be played, to be heard on the air all over the world and I do so appreciate it and I hope that y'all will listen to Moody Mood Music so that you can give all of us another breath of life another chance to make a difference in this world thank you Moody Mood Music the link is below in the description y'all come now yeah couple CDs quickly. Um, this one, <laughs> you're going to laugh when you see this. I've had this for a long time and I just decided to upload something from it. But uh, this is the Lounge Tribute. It's one of those Lounge Tribute CDs. The Lounge Tribute to Eminem. <laughs> now, okay, Eminem, a.k.a. Uh, what, the real Slim Shady. This is, we're talking about a white rapper here who had immense popularity in the, the 90s. Um, and as was done from time to time, somebody would do a lounge tribute. And uh, this was the Lounge Brigade who did tribute. Now I can't even play selections from this uh, now because it's full of obscenities, as you can probably imagine. It's every song is obscenities, obscenities. And it is really funny to listen to because it's like they're trying to, you know, they're like, hey, we're the lounge performers and here we are. And he's like all this vulgarity and whatever. It's it is really funny. I wouldn't play it on Moody Mood Music. Actually, I only did upload one selection onto Moody Mood Music because there was at the end of it, their own composition, which was an instrumental called Lounging with Slim. Um, that is appropriate and nice for an easy listening station. But what year is this from? 2011, I think. Uh, this came out, or maybe earlier than that. I don't know, where's the date on here? 
Anyway, I don't see it, but uh, yeah. I love to find like lounge tributes to somebody. It can be very entertaining. Now here's a very nice CD. I've had this for a long time and just decided to upload some selections this past week. This is from Guild Light Music. That's a term I don't ever use. Light music is actually an alternative uh, phrase for mood music or easy listening music, AKA Muzak even, um, is light music. It meant not classical, um, but not pop as in like rock, but light music. This is interesting. The, uh, the Golden Age, this came out in 2011. The CD came out in 2011. The, the music is from the 1940s and 50s. The Golden Age of Light Music, The Lost Transcriptions, Volume 2, uh, featuring Percy Faith, Montavani, and uh, Sidney Torch. Now, these were all originally on 16-inch um, records, transcriptions, they were called. Records, the, the, other than 6-inch singles, are 12-inch, right? And there's also smaller 10-inch ones. But 16-inch was not really ever sold commercially, um, but they do exist, and they were made for radio stations to do um, radio radio shows it would come on large tram, uh, large transcription discs. Uh, I used to work at a station, a couple of stations I've worked at in the past that uh, did old music or had, you know, odd formats, and they actually had some transcription programs that would be on 16-inch uh, discs. And they were meant to not be kept. Usually you'd play them a couple times, whatever, ditch it. They were never commercially available. So all these songs on here uh, of sort of easy listening music were never, these particular arrangements were never available commercially, um, but these are just transcriptions that were somehow saved and are, were made available on CD. And this is volume two, so I'd love to find volume one. It's gotta be out there, cheap. So yeah, lots of nice music on this one. Comes with a nice book that gives details about transcriptions and what they were and information about how some of these particular ones ended up being saved. Next record, Budget Label Wine Coat. I love the budget labels. I do like Wine Coat. This one is of a well-known singer. Typical for this kind of a label, they would like bill somebody top billing and then have other artists like, this one's not as bad. Like this is not deceptive. Uh, some of them were meant to be deceptive, but this is Frankie Lane and his guests, Maynard Ferguson, Teddy Wilson, Merv Griffin, John Gary not obscure unknown people. These were all known performers. These are just probably all recordings of them before they became famous people. So they're maybe like a lower quality of uh, recording production wise, not their hits or not the actual recording that was a hit for them, but a, maybe a different recording of that song. And it's interesting that they chose Frank Lane as a headliner because actually he only does two songs on the album. Five songs are by John Gary. <laughs> but they just kind of, they apparently only had the rights to two Frankie Lane songs, probably. And so they just had to fill it with other stuff from their uh, library that they would use in different albums. So, but nice, some nice stuff on here. She delights in tears and parting Laughs at love and calls you smarty She's the And finally, this week, well, we all know the Tijuana Brass, and actually Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass, Herb Alpert actually helped to create this next group, um, which was kind of a similar vein, except instead of the brass, it featured the marimba. It's the Baja Marimba Band. Watch out. This is 
is on a and Records, 1964, 66 is the date uh, on this one. They ended up doing, uh, you know, 5 million record albums. There's a lot, quite a few. I have most of them, I think. But this is the first time I've put up anything by the Baja Marimba Band up on Moody Mood Music. Um, I like that if you like the Tijuana Brass kind of music, you're going to like Baja Marimba because it's the same thing, except it's emphasizing uh, marimbas rather than the brass. Something I didn't know that was pointed out when I was researching this, though, is something they did on almost every record cover of theirs. I never noticed it, but it's true now that I know. Something they did on almost every record album in a, was that they would have one person with their back, and the idea being that they were, they were um, taking a leak. <laughs> and they did it on almost every record, so there it is. Uh, leave any comments if you have them about these artists or these records. If you're interested, it's always great to hear more information about them. I certainly don't know everything. I don't know anything about some people. Um, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you would like to see more and uh, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified whenever I do a video. And don't forget to check out Moody Mood Music and that is going to be linked below. So thank you for watching and we will see you guys in the next video.